Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today's video is sponsored by Invictus Capital and their $5,000 Friday giveaways, but I'll have a little more on them later in the video. Today's video is looking at smart contract platforms. I'm invested in all of these that I'm going to talk about today, but the idea comes from the book that I'm reading at the moment, Wyckoff, How I Trade and Invest in Stocks. This isn't something new that I've been doing. Gans also talked about it and many investors look at it. We're trying to pick the strongest horses. So if you've been following me on Twitter and on Instagram, you know that I've been speaking about that lately, especially as Solana and Cardano have been moving up and the other crypto, Polkadot, has not been moving very much at all. It's in a much weaker position than the other two. So that's what we're going to discuss in today's video, purely looking at the charts in a nice, quick and simple fashion. Now, this is the way that I do it. You might have a different way. You might want to look more into the fundamentals and that's also very valid. But for today's video, I'm just looking at the charts to keep it nice, quick and simple and give us an idea whether we want to investigate these projects any further. So before we get started, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, click all so that you see this content come up in your news feed, get the notifications for it, follow me on Instagram and on Twitter, and there's still a special for the Investor Accelerator Patreon group. Link to that is down below as per usual. So this is the book right here. I'm reading this on Kindle. You guys can find that if you like. It's pretty cheap. It's like four bucks on Amazon if you want to have a flick through it. Uh, how I trade and invest in stocks and bonds. Now, this will apply to cryptocurrencies. It applies to an asset that you're looking to purchase, especially when they have uh, niches. There's different sectors to a market for there's an example for stocks. They used to have railroad sectors and obviously their technology and uh, con consumables. We kind of we, we definitely do have that now. And then in cryptocurrency, we have our own different sectors like smart contracts, privacy coins, you name it. There's always a sector for something else, NFTs, etc. So the idea here is to pick the niche, pick the sector that is going to do well. And so you can rate those against each other too. But then within that sector, you want to find the strongest moving assets, the strongest moving companies within that sector. So as I've said, today's video, we're just looking at three. These are out of the top 10, Cardano, Solana, and Polkadot. And the reason being I'm picking three is I just don't want to go too deep into it and just make things way too complicated. We can get the idea from the charts and then apply it to other markets. So I'm choosing these three as well because they are staking cryptocurrencies. As you can see here, Cardano, Solana, Polkadot, and of course, Ethereum is the king. So who is going to take second place at the moment? If you obviously have Cardano, you can be staking it in the Investor Accelerator pool. There's a link to that down below as well. Earn yourself some passive income on Cardano. Got these top three that I'm going to look at today. They're also in the top 10 on coin market cap. Cardano currently sitting at number three at a 70 billion. We've got Polkadot and Solana, 24 billion and 21 billion. So Solana's come up a hell of a lot more. So Solana and Polkadot are similar in their market caps now, but they, they weren't just a few days ago. And Cardano is very much at the other end, a bit more, or almost triple that of Polkadot and more than triple that of Solana. So the, that could be taken into account as well, that maybe we won't see the same gains out of something that has a larger market cap because it's going to take more money to push these, these cryptos. But as you'll see, that even a weaker horse like I mean, Polkadot's the weaker horse at the moment. You'll see that from the charts and I'll explain why. That even Cardano can be pushing harder even though it's got a bigger market cap. So I've mentioned that Polkadot is the weakest out of these three at the moment, but let's see how this actually works on the charts. So I'm going to use the low and our current price point. I'm just going to see how far we have run up on all three against their US dollar value from the May low. So ADA is about 130% up from the May low. Polkadot from the May low is up about 76%, even though it kept running lower, which is a, a weak sign on its own. And Solana is up about 273% from the May low. So just going back to the A to USD chart uh, initially, you can see we've got higher lows. That's a good sign. That's one sign that we are getting strength in the market. And then Polkadot, it got lower lows. That's a weak sign. And then Solana, the same thing. Solana is very similar to ADA, higher lows. So those two were working quite similar. Uh, 
polka dot lower lows, it's still under the 50% level of the major range. So this is the all time low to all time high, still under 50%. So underneath is uh, not necessarily bearish that we have to go to zero, but it's in a weaker position. So it's stronger position when it's in the upper half of the 50 and weaker when it's in the lower half. So a uh, dot is weaker, Solana, of course, stronger. It's actually broken out into new all-time highs. And ADA is in the stronger section looking to potentially break out into all-time highs. Now, you're probably wondering, well, this is all great now. These, these markets are up. Why don't I just invest in DOT because it's much lower? The point here is, is that, like Wyckoff has been talking about in the book and many investors after Wyckoff, even GAN, uh, it's important to look at assets and companies that are in a strong position. They're, they're in a strong position for a reason. Now, I have nothing against DOT. It's one of one of my holdings and it was something that I really liked early on and it had a really good run, but it's just seeming a lot weaker than the other two. So the, the point here is it's down a lot more from the highs. So if we were holding at these areas, we got a long way to catch up just to get back to a break even. For the people buying at the tops or in this region, and that range is about 100 or so percent just to get back to the tops. Some people might be wondering, why don't you just buy something that is low? It's got more room to grow. That is potentially true. We've saw that with something like Luna. But the idea with the investing, setting up your investment portfolio for long-term success is to get something that is in a stronger position and buy the pullbacks because there's no guarantee that this is going to run up. It's cryptocurrency. We assume that everything is going to go up but maybe we don't get the same sort of gains like we do out of Cardano or Solana. So it is possible that, that DOT will outperform them because there's more room to grow to the upside, but it just depends on what sort of portfolio you want to set up for yourself. Do you want to be looking for the, the stronger horses, which may not have the gains in a short period of time because they've already moved up, or do you want to have something for a little bit of a, a longer-term play? So at the moment, Eight is above 50%, Solana is above 50%. It's at new all-time highs, which is also strong. Uh, however, DOT is under the 50%. So now we go and take a look at the pairings. We're pairing each of these against each other. And ADA and DOT, obviously this is an uptrend. That's pretty clear there from the get-go. ADA has been in front of DOT the entire way. This little period during late 2020 and early 2021, it was almost anyone's game, but as we could see, the lows are getting higher, which means ADA is gaining strength against DOT. And we're again, uh, higher lows, higher lows the whole way up and looking for another attempt on the upside to the breakout. The thing that will change here is if we start to break down and get lower lows, which would turn the trend down, meaning that DOT is increasing in value against ADA. But at the moment, we're still in the stronger side of the 50% for ADA against DOT and ADA against SOL, slightly different picture. You can see these two have been battling it off since May, since the dip, basically. So May, June, July, August, we're basically in this little tight range between 0.02 and 0.06. And just the last couple of weeks has shown the ADA dropping because Solana's obviously moved up a fair bit from uh, the recent hype on NFTs. So early on, Cardano had the lead, then Solana took it back. And now we're looking to find out who is going to be the winner on Solana versus ADA. Maybe we don't have a winner and the market continues to trend sideways. One stronger for a period of time, then the other stronger. And then it just keeps switching backwards and forwards. That would just show that both projects are relatively strong and then we would have to measure them against something else like an Ethereum or Bitcoin or maybe a new competitor. Now measuring Solana against DOT and it's a very similar picture to ADA against DOT straight up except it's a little stronger here. So we've got Solana DOT straight up hasn't really come back to test anything at the moment. Solana is just a hell of a lot stronger than DOT. Could we have seen this earlier on? Again, that May period showed that DOT had a lot of weakness in it breaking down further and making new lows than Solana did, which had higher lows slightly, and ADA, which had higher lows again slightly. So if we look at Solana DOT, it just continued up. And this could have been a period through here in May that we could have said, well, maybe DOT, maybe Polkadot is going to lose the race for the time being. We don't know what's going to happen in the next 12 months, but at least for the next several months or the next few weeks, we don't know at the time, the strength 
lies in Solana rather than Polkadot. And that could help us allocate funds to other cryptos in our portfolio. So same deal here that we looked at with ADA against DOT. This is still strong. What would be bearish? What would mean that Polkadot is coming back? Well, a breakdown of the lows. Let's go to Sol Dot Again, same thing. We start to break down the lows. You can see all of these lows being formed on the way up and they're all higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, all the way up. So if we start to get a little bit of a base out and continue to break down or start to break down, then the strength goes back towards Polkadot. And we can see that earlier on as the lows if they begin to break and then we would just move our 50% up and see where this starts to base out. And if we base out on a 50%, then we have a nice stable balanced market between Solana and DOT at that point. So our investment is safe at that point. And finally, I just want to measure them against ETH, which is the king in the smart contract space. So I am risking my Ethereum or my fiat currency or Bitcoin in a smaller project in order to make more Ethereum or Bitcoin because that's what I want to hold most of. You might have a different goal. You might want to hold most of Sol, which means you still want to see it increase against ETH, maybe sell out some at the tops and then come back and buy in more Sol at the bottoms. And right now, Solana is on an uh, in an uptrend against ETH, broken to new all-time highs. ADA against ETH, also in an uptrend. It has more data because it's older. So this is even stronger. So we're starting to push and get a higher low, a low, another low. And this low here caught me by surprise. We're still getting higher and higher lows, which is a good sign. Next thing we need to do is break through these tops and continue the uptrend because at the moment it's uncertain being in that trend. And on the other hand, DOT and ETH, it's just been a continual downtrend, down a small period of up. And then we just keep getting squished into this descending wedge here. Now, before we get to the summary of the video, today's sponsor is Invictus Capital. You've seen the CEO and the co-founder interviewed on the channel as we look through their crypto hedge funds. So it's an easy way to look at investing in the top 10 or top 20 cryptocurrencies if you don't want to be at your computer daily or weekly looking for new altcoins. They rebalance the portfolios on a weekly basis and they're announcing $5,000 giveaways on Friday for any new or existing investors into the Crypto 10 hedge fund. So if you want to know more about this, there's a link to it in the description down below and you can find out a little more about their website and their current holdings. So this is their top 10 at the moment and this gets rebalanced on a weekly basis. The idea here is that it trades between cryptocurrencies and US dollar to limit the drawdowns when the market drops. They have all of the details on the website. So if you want to find out anything more about the crypto hedge fund, check out the link in the description down below, Crypto 10 Hedged. You can also talk to them live in their Discord if you've got questions that you want answered about the Crypto 10 hedge fund. So in summary for today's video, what Wyckoff and other legendary investors have been talking about is to get on board with investments that are leading the pack. And we have a few signals that we've looked at today that show which assets are leading the pack. Higher lows, breaks above 50% because that's in a stronger position, breaks above resistance levels. And we see this time and time again on cryptocurrencies which tend to break out first and potentially get bigger gains than others. As we can see with DOT, it hasn't broken the highs set in May and June, so after the big crash, and it continued to make lower lows. Whereas for ADA and for Sol, they have a very similar pattern where they had higher lows above 50%, broke resistance levels, and now we can see that they've actually played out to the upside. This isn't just a one-off type of play. This is how the markets are read using technical analysis. So if you want to learn more about technical analysis, trading and investing in cryptocurrencies or stocks, make sure you check out the Investor Accelerator. Links are down below. The special is still on for the Patreon groups. So that's your monthly updates on education in the trading space, especially in cryptocurrency. You can also stake your Cardano with the Investor Accelerator staking pool. Anyone can join. Link to that is down below. Full tutorial video is down below. Make sure you've hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you found some value from this. You can follow me on Instagram or on Twitter for daily crypto updates or on the next video here on YouTube. I'll see you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.